Uh, hey, everybody, this is Vince Gilligan, co-creator of Better Call Saul, and this is our first episode entitled Uno, and I co-wrote and directed this episode. And this is Peter Gould. I'm co-creator of Better Call Saul, and I wrote this episode with Vince. And I'm Thomas Golubich. I am the music supervisor of the show. Stu Lyons, co-executive producer. I'm Bob Odenkirk. I play Jimmy McGill. Michael McGee and I play Chuck McGill. Diane Mercer, I'm one of the producers. And here we People are. People love this. <laughs> oh, they do. They were but so do they know happy. that you went through the training school to yeah, learn yeah, how to they, do this? They're very excited and titillated by the fact that I can actually make a Cinnabon. And I'd have to get refreshed on it, but I could do it pretty quick. You, yours were good. Yours There's a lot I love of, this uh, reveal. I love that you reveal. You like margarine and sugar? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's butter. It's butter. Yeah, and you also oh, yeah. made, you oh, also made yeah. a delicious shake. Yes, I, had, I had one of those. That was really good. I'd like to do a call out to Tony Fanning's work in this. He created the mural in the back of the Cinnabon. That's oh. not a corporate or a, a, an age thing. And they loved it so much they wanted to oh, yeah, use great. it for it's all really of their great. stores. It's, Is it still open uh, in this particular? I, I don't know whether they left it. I think they did. because It's kind of genius. It, it really is. It's um, beautiful. It's like a Thomas Hart Benton yeah. Yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, but the Cinnabon people were very, very nice. Hats off to them. Awesome. They, they were. Uh, they, they were great. They, there's a lady coming up here uh, as an extra who was uh, one of the Cinnabon's top uh, executives. Uh, just they were just nice, nice folks. And this is shot at the Cottonwood Mall in Albuquerque. This is not actually uh, Nebraska. You know one thing. What do, you, what do you call it, Diane, that takes the color out? I'm old school. I call it color correction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, our, we started in dailies. You know, we, it was scripted to always be black and white. Right. And uh, so we did the dailies black and white. We never saw it in color, actually, until we assembled the episode. And it was very weird to see it in color because it's so beautiful. So we shot white. it in color. And shot then it in color. And then Diane took and, it from yeah. there. And, and actually, in, uh, I remember in color There's time. There's the lady with the hat, the in black the hat. In the color session, Arthur's, Arthur heard realized how much we love the black and white and he said well you know you could just use black and white for all the uh, other flashbacks and put a different look on this and that blew my mind and i because we could never really picture it any other way but black and white but it's it's strange to have all those choices so late in the process michael perez there was the fellow who was staring looked to be staring at jimmy or or, or gene i should say he did a nice job yeah that snowstorm was at about 100 degrees yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really well done. That's, and the black and white helps with it yeah. feeling cold. Feeling cold. Does, exactly. Where did they find all that winter gear? I must have been chucked for the <laughs> hey, people, It's people. Albuquerque. Just wait a few months. Yeah. You need it. People showed up wearing it, I think, mostly. Yeah. Because yeah, there's so many extras. Although Jennifer Bryant uh, did a great job, our costume designer. That the, the exterior there is an interesting apartment complex in, in Albuquerque that dates back to the early 70s. An interesting local architect designed it. But this is a very different apartment in another part of town where the interior was shot and uh and bob i just i love the way you i love the way you saddest you were, man in the world saddest man in the world <laughs> <laughs> microwave for one yeah <laughs> hey diane i can't remember is that a burn-in is no is, we've had this on the day we made we we caught it um right. we we pulled all the pieces together and we made this um we rushed to get it ready so you guys could have it on the day and it used to be a big TV problem with that. With old picture tubes, you couldn't do that at all. But you can, uh, you can grab it this way. And, and the Nebraska Weather Report and the QVC are just so yeah. wonderful. And are, are period specific, I believe. They are. Uh, yes, yeah, they are. We actually, I'm embarrassed. I can't remember the name of the uh, network, but we contacted a, a ne network in Omaha that was very kind to license us that period specific I footage i love this shot and i love the fact that you can see bob's breath we, mm -hmm. our, our our uh uh warner Hanlon and his crew uh zapped it zapped the outside of the glass with some sort of uh uh refrigerant uh some sort of uh canned air kind of thing and and and, and got it down very cold so that uh and bob i think you took a a, a drink of hot coffee or something yeah first. that's right yeah bob it always seems to me when you're doing a scene like this i've never asked you this but when even when you're not shooting, you seem to carry a lot of the scene with you. I, I have a photo of you Maybe on the I'm set, not. reading, <laughs> waiting for the waiting for the shot next shot, and you just seem so 
sad. Uh, you know, distance. listen, honestly, the people talk about the challenge of doing this part, and a lot of times they talk about the amount of screen time or the number of lines, and that's a challenge, but it's kind of uh, like running or something. I don't know. It's a, It's not. The most challenging thing is maybe I'm not such a great actor, but... I, when I play a scene like this and you're going to do it all day and you're going to do it from multiple angles or some of the heavier scenes, yeah, I just kind of got to stay in there. I got to stay in the emotional head of the character. And that's just how I do it. I, I, I don't, I'm not adept enough to be that guy, feel those things the way I think I should and then walk out and, I don't know, whatever. Whatever Drop works, whatever you're doing. Edger, whatever you're doing. Yeah, I, mean, I, I feel like really... It's fascinating. It's fascinating to it, see, though. This little bit of color. Diane, talk about how that was done. Reflected. Um, yeah, that was... It was scripted to have the color come in there, um, and we had a lot of trouble in post figuring out the way to make it work. And actually, Tom Schnauz was the one that I think we were sitting in the room looking at the cut, and Tom pitched just having the reflection on the glasses. So that reflection was not there in the, the dailies. Um, we actually pulled the old commercials that we shot, you know, back in the day for Breaking Bad, and we put them into the glasses and, and brought the color in. And Stu, I, I believe that shot of the Statue of Liberty, what, what, what was that? That was uh, shot when we were doing uh, Breaking Bad. That was episode 208, I believe. It, uh, it, it, that particular shot, I think, was the time-lapse shot that we were trying to do at the end, and it was a close-up on that. Uh, no, that actually was... It's a much wider shot, and it's from one of the days that you did a second unit yeah, shooting second over unit. there. It wasn't time lapse; it's regular but I, speed. I, I but I don't think it was on top of the regular saw. It was building. not on the building. Oh. It was not on the building. Wow. This was something um, we set yeah. up, and it was right near the. Um, Tom <laughs> Schnauz grew this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes, well, in the writers' room while we worked. Yeah, he's he's a talent. Did this, he draw it before you put it in the script, or no, did you no, no. script I it him, and then he I drew him it? To draw it? I asked him to draw it. <laughs> No, it was in the script, the uh, uh, Barbarian Riding a Unicorn, <laughs> as one does. And I think this <laughs> is the a... courtroom in Las Lunas, isn't it? Was it was all the way down? It was. It, uh, it was, was a drive. It, yeah, this is, yeah, this is not Albuquerque. <laughs> Maybe the one of the few shots not in Albuquerque. This is a defunct uh, courtroom right. uh, that is mostly used for storage now. And the and the new Los Lunas, I believe it was Los Lunas, right? Uh, courthouse is just a little ways down the road. Mm. And here's the restroom we built. Tony did a beautiful Tony job. Tony Fanning on this. and W. Gilpin and their and their guys. This is an amazing set. Yeah, it's all real tile. And uh, I you, made the mistake of peeing in it. That's the thing. That <laughs> <laughs> uh, Movie you, magic. It Movie was magic. You. <laughs> we, it was you. <laughs> we see it. We see it a couple of times in the episodes. The last time we see it this season is actually in the titles of episode nine when the uh, matchbook is floating around oh. in one of those urinals. Yeah, Lonnie Lane here is the bailiff. He did a great job. Right. Uh, the judge is uh, Larry Glaister. Uh, the 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 uh, the lady uh, the uh, court reporter is uh, is Jennifer Bean. She did a great job. She's a real court reporter. I think retired, uh, but she is a, a natural actress, and she's really typing away everything that Bob is saying here. And then at the end of the day, she gave me reams and reams and reams of paper <laughs> readout from the uh, wow. reporting machine, and wow. we we still have them somewhere. Wow. We have them, uh, you know. <laughs> the board, the boredom, and the uh, the ennui of this courtroom is uh, based on a couple of days that we spent in the L.A. courts. Uh, really, and we realized we could never do uh, the court, the court, the kind of court scene that you see in in, in movies and TV. It was that was not really our thing. Uh, but maybe doing the ennui and the uh, the fluorescent lit boredom, maybe we could do that. So that's right, right. That's a let, and you guys, it's sort of so painfully real. It is. <laughs> if you've ever been down for jury duty, it's yeah. painfully real. That was sort of the point of that. We were thinking, yeah, what what has been done like a million times and done wonderfully on TV and movies? It's it's guys talking, arguing wall to wall in court. But yeah, it just seemed like quiet was mm -hmm. a good way to go here. And, and all these, Bob, you're great. And all these extras are wonderful. Extras also. did a great job. They they were so professional. They're such a nice, pleasant bunch of people. I had such a good time with them that day. We were here all day long. Uh, the uh, I want to give some other shouts out here. Uh, Sanford Kelly is the prosecutor. Mm -hmm. He, of course, no one, no one in this entire scene except for except for Bob uh, speaks. But you can read volumes into their faces here. And then the three young men are uh, Grant Barker, 
and uh, Clay Space and David Sayers. I don't know. Yeah, so, David, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, but these guys did a great job. Everybody is is acting uh, just with their with their faces here, uh, except for except for the lovely uh, Mr. Odenkirk. How tough was it remembering all this goddamn dialogue we were giving you? It's not hard. This is great stuff. I mean. This is a story. When you're telling a story, it's not there. hard to, to tell it. <laughs> yeah, I got yeah, this. Yeah, when it's I got story. this. <laughs> you guys are so covered. You guys are good. Yeah. The parts no that are hard is when it's uh, sort of random facts or kind of a... Like, this call, is a like guy, calling bingo numbers, for instance. This is a guy without a line who steals Those are a little yes. challenging. Yeah. The prosecutor Just here. So, Same. yes. Yeah. And also how That's long it, it takes to do. So nice. Yeah. Yeah, the bingo. Now, this is reminiscent to me of the uh, dragging of the chair the in Sling Blade. Episode oh, yeah. of Breaking Bad. Oh. I thought you were going to say Sling Blade. <laughs> <laughs> Some good chair dragging yeah, in that, too. Was there, this is my Walsh, favorite yeah. shot. Arthur Albert came up with this shot. Yeah. That our, our DP did it. I love yeah. this shot. I love the guy's faces reflected on the top yeah. of the VCR. This is a VCR, by the way, for young folks watching. This is, <laughs> this is the way we used to watch. Uh, uh, I remember watching you direct this uh, this video here, which was actually shot at at the courthouse. Right, uh, and it was you looked like you were having so much fun. I was having fun. I felt like I felt like you were maybe remembering something that you had done once. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> you, 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 you know. <laughs> yeah. These oh, three young guys were a lot of fun. They did a great job, and yeah. of course, the ten thirteen uh, date on the VCR is uh, is a little shout out, to a little. Tip of the hat to uh, an excellent, excellent job I used to have uh, writing for uh, X Files. That's uh, Chris Carter's birthday, October thirteenth. So my God. former boss. So there was a little. And in two thousand one, I was actually working on the X Files. Oh. Triumph. You did. You did. You you created an atmosphere. Uh, uh, just this crazy, exuberant atmosphere when you were shooting that. And he, I think the guy, everybody picked up on it. Yeah. If you <laughs> no guys problem. fuck a skull, you might as well enjoy doing That's right. it. <laughs> That's right. Well, you know, yes. Defendant. If you're going to stick your wang in the throat hole, you might as well do it with <laughs> Oh, I love this. I love this. I love oh. this character. This is uh, Nadine Marissa. Uh, who is wonderful. And the last line here when she says, you have yourself a nice day. <laughs> that was all her. That was not in the script. And this this location we actually saw in Breaking Bad also. We yes. did. We had Walt sitting on the bench <laughs> out there. You know, When, when he got arrested, uh, right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Our prop guys really jumped through hoops because everything like a date on, on the check, all of that stuff has been logged and, and kept track of so that we can, because time is such an uh, important thing here. And this is our introduction to the car. Yeah. <laughs> the esteem. Our fake reveal. Dennis Milliken and his guys did a great job finding this Character thing. cars. And then uh, Tony Fanning and his crew did a great job yes, making it look even more uh, unpleasant. It's really not a bad, the Suzuki esteem is not a bad car. And this thing ran like a top. But we kind of uglied it up a bit. So, Bob, tell us about this British accent. What part? What part oh, yeah, of the UK yeah, yeah. do you think this guy is from? <laughs> well, we actually based it on somebody, right? Our uh, oh yeah, yeah. Actually, we had Stu Stu Richardson, our post supervisor, Stu Richardson recorded, a, recorded it for me, and yeah. I'm I'm doing a crude version of his accent that he played. So you could ask him; he could probably tell you what street it's from. You're 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 famous for your for your for your British accent. For my accents. sloppy British. Your accents. sloppy yes. <laughs> and and will, willfully sloppy British <laughs> accents, which I because I've been around Anglophiles uh, too much, and they tick me off. <laughs> so every chance I get to do the worst. British accent that slides all over and becomes Irish and Scottish. I, <laughs> I, I do it because I love it. Uh, and I, I love the idea of Anglophiles watching going, that's not right. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and me sitting there going, so what? <laughs> what do you care? Vince, I love how you delay Jonathan's yeah. introduction here. Thank you. It was it was fun to do. Of course, there's no there delaying that voice. You know who it is. Yeah. Now you hear him say, his "Yeah, that's first true." Line, but yeah. it's fun to it's the fun teasing. to withhold. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love this scene. I, I actually looked at this when we were doing the uh, the bookend scene at the end of the season, uh, and used I, I think pretty pretty similar yeah, angles cool. for the most yeah. part. You win. Hooray for you. 
You guys are so much fun together. I love you too. <laughs> Hell of a More team. Stickers. <laughs> and, stickers. And, and Bob, you got some great stuff that's not in the script coming up here that I just loved. Uh, the, uh, was so it, when you talk to the two us. cops, you're like, hey, <laughs> just stand there, guys. Don't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Give a medal. There we go. That's <laughs> yeah, just oh, the oh, Kelly. Oh, my God. Julianne Emery. Julianne and Emery. Jeremy, Jeremy Seamus. These guys are yeah. so. You know, good. people love both of them, oh, but man. Julianne's yeah. mean lady. This is Patton Oswald's new favorite villain, he says. <laughs> 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 Betsy so Kelly. Weirdly wow. sexy. I can't. Yeah. Even figure out. I mean, she's a very Julianne's a very attractive uh, young woman, but but somehow it's I don't know what it is. She she taps into a masochism in us or something. I guess <laughs> the crazy. Conference. One thing about their relationship is they spent a weekend rehearsing before the scene. Yes. Just preparing meals together so that they could have that married great. familiarity. Really I mean, they did that on their own, and when they came in, they had that whole overlap um, relationship that. I'm, I'm so glad you mentioned that. These two, they, they really they, worked they, off camera. 150 percent, right from before I ever even met them. This was the day I met them. Right. And I was running for my life as as all directors, uh, probably all directors in television. Period. Are always running for their life. But I, I was like, uh, and I got Jeremy's name wrong when I first said hi to him. And, it, oh. and these guys, and I was, I felt so harried, and so uh, like uh, like I wasn't ready to do this. And uh, you guys, and Bob, you and you are so great with these two. You guys. You, made, you guys made me look good. Well, I know Julianne from Fargo. Of and, course uh, you do. Yeah. And so we met at their uh, hotel and ran these scenes. God bless you for doing that. Great, great. And it, this is another Breaking Bad location. We didn't use that many of them. Yeah, that's right. This is, this is where we see Mike uh, one of the first times, I believe. Yeah, I think uh, he meets Lydia here, I that's think. That's right. Yeah. And, Mike meets um, Lydia here. Is this also where he brings Jesse? Yeah. Yeah. Um, he... When they are taking their first yeah. like, road. And I think Gus Fring wow. was outside at one point. This was it, huh? Yeah. yeah it's really now like, on the tour. It's a different we really like this place. Section but, of it. Go visit, spend money, be nice to the folks who run it. They're mm -hmm. a good <laughs> bunch of people. This is a real business, and so be respectful and considerate, as I know uh, you folks will. But it's a, it's a good restaurant, good people, on Old Route 66. Oh, so that's that's a shot, yeah. Vince. Yeah. That's a fun shot. I wanted to get, we had a giant, uh, Mark Hansen, our prop master, had a giant pin for me oh, to yeah, use yeah, because yeah. I thought, it might be better, but it, uh, to use a giant pen, but actually, and make it look like a normal sized pen. I see. But that it, was just a regular pen. Do it the Hitchcock way. Oh, yeah. that looked great right there. But Harry, our uh, a camera operator, got a great shot. Did there. you slow it down, or is it? Uh, uh, yes. It was that slowed yeah. down a bit. A yeah. little bit slowed down. And the ad living as they're going out. Oh, this, this, great. Great. Yeah. this does great. Uh, this does great. I love how she just the mask. Yeah. Thank moment. you, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kettleman's always even in this their first scene. He's always a beat behind. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Bastard. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a mark. Either poor bastard or lucky man. Yeah. Depends on how you I look at it. I think it alternates day by day, <laughs> hour by hour, minute by minute, <laughs> minute by minute. Beautifully edited this episode by Skip McDonald, uh, assisted by Curtis Thurber. Did a great job. This Talk, is a great moment. This here. is a fun, and you and you're really you're free driving here, and we're jammed. Actually, I was in a van following you, but uh, a Harry, uh, the uh, camera operator, and how many people were jammed in this car? Plus, Al Goto was hidden down in the front right, seat here <laughs> to pull the uh, the, the, uh, the e brake. Yeah. yeah, to pull the uh, parking brake to help skid you out here. But you're doing this stunt uh, all by yourself here, and and uh, you're. You're hooking it and you're bumping over. Uh, there you go. So talk about that a little what bit. What was that? <laughs> In reality, what was that? Talk about how that's done, Diane. Um, so, I mean, Al hit the e-brake and made you spin out, right. right? And there was no body there. Right. And the reason we did that is because we wanted to see... Uh, Jimmy's reaction in the window. We wanted Jimmy to be driving, and it's not safe to have him do hit the, the stunt performer. Right. So then we shot a separate piece with the skater uh, falling into a into the camera, yeah. and we put them together. With no car, together. just, just yeah, no car. He just yeah. felt he yeah. fell. He kind of turned the camera, and he fell onto the camera. Yeah. And then we added CG. Uh, Bill Pulaski, our visual effects supervisor, um, they added the CG breaking and and. Um, 
and the glass broken yeah. glass. Play to yeah. the colors to make sure that the shadow is correct and the sizing and all that stuff. And there's also there's a, a lot of sound work there too, isn't there? Isn't there a a, a train break? In there? Um, I there might be actually. I that I don't remember if we used it here or if that was in another episode. But yeah, there might actually be a train break there. But Nick Forshager and uh, Kevin and Larry uh, and the sound are sound wonderful sound post sound folks and of Incredible. course Phil who records uh, on on set sound. Yes, Everybody, Phil. great team. Stephen and Daniel. Stephen and Daniel <laughs> Levine. These two. These I guys are these UCB guys. guys from New York, and uh, I think graphic artists and. Comedy writers. How did you guys find them? Uh, Sharon Bialy, Sherry Thomas found them for us. And talk about their uh, tape. Their audition tape was the most unique audition tape we've ever seen. They, they, they did the scene. They were standing next to each other, so immediately we loved them. But then they said, "And you need to see if we're we can skateboard." And they cut to see amazing skateboarding scenes in which they had superimposed their own heads on the skateboarders' <laughs> bodies. And, and it, was, it was hilariously funny, and uh, we just knew that they were our guys. But of course, they're not really pro skateboarders. They're not and even so, skateboarders, period. And so in, pre, in prep, we, we, we were treated to little videos of uh, Al, had, Al had a skateboarding teacher working with them in New York, and we would get to see little videos of them going around specialized battery, battery, occupation, isn't going it? around Battery Park and so on. Talk about that. The reason he's wearing the black thing on his wrist. Because while he was practicing skateboarding, he took a tumble and uh, either pulled it or broke it. Yeah. Broke his, his left thumb, I believe. And that's why uh, that is uh, that is Stephen, uh, the, the fellow in the black shirt in that last scene. That's why he's wearing that thing on his wrist. He wears it through the whole show because he really broke in practicing <laughs> for this. Oh, no. Here we are at the nail salon with Mrs. Nguyen. Uh, who says hi? And now Eileen, we're back Eileen, on stage. Eileen Fogarty. Who's a wonderful actress. She's very sweet lady. She's terrific. All this the is, ladies in there are sweet. This is Tony's uh, beginning of Tony's set. And I believe, after, other than Eileen, most of those actresses are real workers from that nail salon, aren't they? They love being in yeah. the show. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. Sweet ladies. They have great energy every time we do it. A little it's mural. Fun to, and fun to go there All and right. shoot. This was never supposed to be a big set that I cut for budget reasons. <laughs> <laughs> I just want that clear. They wrote it small. It looks bigger than it is. It does That's, in that one shot. And it's shot, tiny. <laughs> but in that one shot with a 10 millimeter lens, I believe it is, you can literally, you are literally looking at all four walls mm -hmm. in that one wide shot. It's, uh, you could, probably six and a half feet across, maybe. We should talk then. about all the set dressing. It's no, all that, period. It's phone just one. The is amazing. I the love hot the water phone. Heater. phone. We have to make heater. sure it, it works. And the fact that he has to move the chair to open the door. <laughs> and that's <laughs> Fiona, specified. Fiona Com, which is named after my daughter. Oh. So, uh, but all of these are, are graphics that we, we create. Mm -hmm. You know, I, Vince, did you come up with the water heater after? Afterward, to put that in? No, I think it was part of the idea we had, just to, just to make this the shittiest office in human <laughs> business history, you know. Just and 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 our sound guys, uh, Nick Forshager and his crew, programmed this great gurgling sound. If you're listening uh, closely, you can hear it always gurgling away next to him there. You know what's amazing, Vince and Peter, is how many mysteries there are in this yeah. opening episode. Yeah, yeah. And and they're. I want to say, in a way, not sexy mysteries. They're just like, what's going on? Well, they're the what stuff is, that you look through somebody's who is window. Who HHM? Yeah. Why does he tear up? What is going on? Why is does this guy who audience? drives that tearing up a check for $26,000? Yeah. There's no. so much story. And, of course, if you've seen the season and you know what all happens. Well, here's can. another mystery. Why what is that? Right. Can can. It's just one after another. Oh. And it's, I can't believe the audience well, I guess I was surprised at the uh, ratings, and I was like, why are you surprised? Everybody who watched Breaking Bad is going to try it, see the show. But then they just hung with us. It's, it's, That's it's, amazing, with all these mysteries and all this uncertainty about who he is and what he's doing. And But if the mysteries make you want to solve them, that's you're going to keep watching. Yeah, that's the whole Still, it's there are simple. so many. That's yeah. my only observation, is it's not like there's one big one or mm -hmm. two. There's mm -hmm. like... You know, so just everywhere you look, it's like, wait, who's that? Who's that? Well, that's, that's Sarah, Sarah Minnick, by the way, and James Dowling is Francis. Sir Francis here. Sarah Minnick is behind the desk. She did a great job. And, and of course, when the Hamlin, Hamlin McGill elevators open, there's a tone yeah. written by yeah. Dave Porter. 
beautiful that. melody. Hopefully that'll be something you could get as a hey, like a go. phone uh, phone you ring or something. And I, we made, I made all these lines up here. This is, uh, <laughs> yeah. No, of course. And then it turned out Patty Chayefsky copied yeah, you, right? Yeah, Patty Chayefsky somehow uh, copied What a rip uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, This is obviously from the wonderful movie Network. I'm sorry. This is table. You know, Ned Beatty did all of his work in one day. Is that true? That's hard to believe. Wow. That's what I heard. Maybe I I'm, think he maybe replaced that, another right? actor at the last minute. There's a wonderful book about the making of Network. Oh, really? Ooh, I got to re read that. It really yeah, is terrific. I did not I, know that's that. what I heard. I, I maybe may have been misinformed. Oh, that, that's, that's awesome. Grand. <laughs> so here we and then now we get we lay eyes for the first time on uh, on Patrick Fabian and on Ray Seahorn here sitting at the end of the table, and uh, we're lucky to have him on the show. You'll hear plenty more about them and other uh, other audio commentaries. But suffice it to say, we are lucky to have him on the show. And uh, they they're both. They're both they're both wonderful, and she's kind of she's kind of snuck in here in the sense of you're not supposed to know yet that she's important. Right. That's right. That's right. It, it's it's what Bob was talking about is mysteries, but it's also we want it to feel like you're coming into a story in progress, rather than trying to laboriously make right. every point. And you know what? You know we. It, it sounds like. Oh, we're so smart, but not really, because a lot of the time people don't get the chance to do that because there are studios and networks that are scared, and we're so lucky yeah. to have uh, partners who are willing to let us walk out on a limb and see how far we can take it. Because uh, it's one of the notes you get as a writer. The, the most common note is, I want more clarity here. Right. And if you took that note out, most notes, would, note sessions would be about four minutes long. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Good point. Jennifer. Talking about likability after the clarity. That's right. We have yeah. to be clear oh. that we like them. That's right. See, yeah. That would me. Very good point. You always bring up uh, the, uh, this uh, series called Buffalo Bill. You remember that? Oh, yeah. Dabney Coleman. Dabney Coleman. Hilarious Coleman. show. Yes. But they couldn't sell it because America hates this guy. Well, they're supposed to hate him. He's a yeah. horrible person. <laughs> but a hilarious show and a, a great actor doing a hilarious that job. That was a good show. Yeah, Just ahead of its funny. time, probably. Yeah. I'd like to see him again. These yeah. light fixtures were... Uh, yeah. Created for this scene. So I mean, they don't the exist. Ones the ones on the on the table. Well, no, yeah. I don't think they're. I think they found them somewhere. They, but they, I, but I, what I meant was that you asked for those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yeah, so they were, and, and Tony uh, and his crew did a great job uh, tracking them down. I think it was Libby. Libby found them, and and yes, they were. Uh, they it was uh, hard to. They they worked hard to get them. And we were lucky to get these offices. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The, the very, very take yeah, a good picture, helpful people. Do. Very nice folks who let us shoot in their building here. We appreciate it. I, I just love Patrick in this in this moment here. Oh, yeah. He, yeah. he is so sincere in yeah. his own weird, his own his own stiff way. He is he is sincere. He never gets good guy, bad guy so perfectly throughout the season. Mm -hmm. And look at the work Jennifer Bryan and her 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 ladies did. Oh my uh, Lord. Her folks did, uh, I should say, with the uh, uh, with the uh, costume here, the wardrobe. Uh, Everything. Just, you, you want to talk about Bob's suit? And yes. How much attention you gave to that? Well, the nipple buttons. That was something she came up with. <laughs> <laughs> she's he's rock. You're rocking the nipple buttons there. That's right. <laughs> Are they real or I mean, do suits have she's those? Added, no, no. She <laughs> added them. <laughs> they, maybe they will now. It was a prank. <laughs> they, they were playing a prank on you, Bob, and you totally fell for it. <laughs> Oh, poor Jimmy. Oh, he so just gets he gets the shit kicked out of him in this episode. There's a cattleman's again. How do you think he got how do you think they wound up going to HHM? I think that they it, they they were hip to the idea they should contact a lawyer by by the hard leg work, the hard work uh, of this gentleman. Mm -hmm. And then they said, "Hey, well, why don't we go to a good law firm?" And this poor guy got HHM the job essentially. Right. Very, very nice music cue by Dave Porter here. Lovely, yeah. lovely music cue. Here. This is one of I, my one of my favorite one of my favorite shots one of the, best of, shots of, in the, whole of the season. Yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. Our, one of my favorite cues. Yes. Too. Also, the, whole, uh, the whole the introduction of of uh, Kim here. Yes. Is just, yeah. Also, I'm happy to kick trash cans. <laughs> Did you? You're wearing steel-toed <laughs> you boots want. for this. Yes, right? I am. But <laughs> please <laughs> give me those. But also, I will be happy to do that. <laughs> These trash Once cans. An these things, uh, Mark Hansen found them for us, and then he said, I said, how many can you get? Because I want to do a lot of takes, maybe. And he said, well, these things cost like $300 each. Wow. Really? Oh, so we only kicked the shit out of two of them, I think. <laughs> <laughs> they wear it well. 
She's so cool. She's so cool. And they must really know each other. If we yeah, can just the bring back so smoking sweet. in America. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, if we can just make it look sexy. After yeah. this, this season, up, kids. it'll be, it'll be a, a country full of smokers with wills. <laughs> or at least chewing tobacco, if not, if not cigarettes. And the lighting across them is so This is low. not a shot that you could get away with on any other show without getting a note. What would the note be, Stu? Uh, why don't we see her? Well, shit, man, her. you we couldn't get see. away with a shot on a Disney show because they're smoking. Right. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, there's no if, smoking. If they weren't smoking, they wouldn't be in a garage. And there she is. <laughs> and clean, a matter of fact, there she is she cleaning up it. his yeah, mess. Yeah, yeah. Been doing it for years. I love this. Yeah, I love the way she plays this. Just, just More questions Oh, love what both of you guys. Yeah, you guys absolutely. are so wonderful. Mm -hmm. And, and Ray, Ray was so patient because, you know, she, she in the barely tree, appears so. in the first episode, first couple episodes. And oh, but what, was, a, what an intro, though. Yeah. We love the trees. We love the wind in the trees at, uh, over at Chuck's house. What is going on here? What the hell is he doing? Uh, absolutely. Got some nice, uh, nice lighting coming up by uh, Mr. Arthur Albert. One of my great regrets this season is that we didn't see you push the button to turn that watch on. Well, no, well, you know what? I, I looked at it. I, it's uh, tricky. The, the trouble with the the trouble with it, though, I looked closely at it because I wanted to do that. And unfortunately, it's it's a it's an old LED, uh, decades old LED uh, watch. But the trouble is, when you push the button, the little red letters mm -hmm. light up so dimly that it mm -hmm. didn't show up on. Yeah, on, on Diane, did you, you add that spark? No, no, that was a. Uh... Myself. That practical. was totally practical. That was Static. a practical spark. Uh, 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 Warner's special effects crew came up with a rig with a nine volt battery, and uh, did it hurt when you? That no. was your finger. She wasn't it. depressed for about a week after that. <laughs> <laughs> this, yeah. this is so beautiful, and it it is truly lit by the light of this actual lantern. A lot of the lanterns in this set are not real. Kerosene lanterns, or no, what are they? They're, they're not kerosene, they're, they're, but they're, they're mostly yeah. battery. This one was a real. What is it? What does it run it's on? It's a white gas. It's a Coleman white lantern. Yeah. And then you and you, uh, Mr. Odenkirk, are not only doing great acting here, but actually lighting this entire sequence with this one light. Yeah. Well, I insist on lighting all my own lanterns. <laughs> 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 and you burned your hand on this damn Tom thing. Tom Cruise can do his own stunts. But I, I light my own. <laughs> You're gonna light yourself. You can <laughs> climb the side of the Burj Dubai or whatever, but you gotta light your own Coleman lantern. I mean, you burned your hand on it, right? At one point? I did. Oh. A little in the trigonosis. Yes. Yes. But and here easy. we go. Can there. you actually type a manual typewriter, Michael? That's slow. <laughs> no faster. <laughs> and I was typing nonsense. You gotta remember that. <laughs> Heather Mary and our uh, writer's assistant wrote a beautiful letter that unfortunately I don't think you can read even if even if you have 4K. Translating to Dr. How about you and me, oh, Michael? Oh. Starting How up about? Right off yeah. starting cold on this, this scene. So did bros. you guys rehearse before you oh, got yeah, to yeah. that? What we, happened? How did bit. that work? Yeah. What did we do? Did we We rehearse? just read it. We just yeah. read it, I think, the day before. But Vince also had time, a little bit of extra time, especially for this scene, if I'm not misremembering. To run it, we ran it. We just we did. did it. We had yeah. a whole day for this. Yeah. And it's, it, but it's a, to be fair, it's almost, it's a whole act, except yeah. for the exteriors. But there's uh, it's, so it's much going act. on. I mean, when mm -hmm. I think about even committing to that, Vince, like here, these two guys are going to show up and be brothers and play this long scene and all that goes on between them. Whew. You guys are so good. Risk. Risk. You guys are so You guys are so great. good. And again, it, it's a little bit. It's like a. It's like a scene you could see in a theater because it's 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 all it's two guys talking. And and I'm fascinated. Michael, by when these you two. I when you've talked, I've only heard you talk about this part and getting taking this part. It sounds like you really just had his name and his relationship. You didn't have. I didn't have. I didn't have much, and I didn't have. I didn't have any symptoms until uh, the fourth episode. Then I, and, and so I was just, but this, I'm protected for all this early stuff. I'm protected. We don't really see me coming up against it. And by the time we do, we, it, it, it's become clear. But, but I mean, it's just, just secondary. When you showed up on set, what did you know? You had the script? You had how many scripts? Too? I, I knew that, yes. And I knew that, I knew that uh, my position in this other, in this firm, uh, that you are, you know, I, well, everything that you see in the scene is what I knew. <laughs> not much, not much more. 
John. And you had, you were on doing JFK on, uh, or, or, I'm sorry, uh, LBJ. 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 Uh, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, all, the way, all the way. All the way. Yes. All the way. And he took correct. a break. And, and this is a set. <laughs> That's right. This is Tony Fanning's beautiful Great set for Chuck's house. Oh, my Lord. Thanks for pointing that out. Exactly. It's a wonderful, wonderful set. And W. Gilpin and his guys built it, and it's beautiful. This was our one uh, major set for the season, really. You know, it's interesting. There's a great kind of wasted chunk of real estate when you look at his record collection. Yeah. <laughs> so this guy is not going to hear these records for yes, a little while. That's true. Uh, and of course, it's all, you know, it's just whatever you stick in there. But I'm imagining that yeah. he's got one, like the one that was stolen from yeah. me, you know, 20 years yeah. ago. I had, all my records were stolen. Oh, yeah. no. oh. But it was, you know, stuff that I had since, you know. Like having pictures of your ex girlfriend. Uh, because yeah. because I think your, that your, dad was in, your dad was in the music business, wasn't he? Yes, yes. But I also, you know, I, I overspent my youth. <laughs> <laughs> on, uh, right. God damn it. Music. If anyone's listening and knows where uh, Mr. McCann's records are, please reach Return out. <laughs> no, no. I, I saw one of them in a, in a in a record store. I saw one th that I had, in fact, stolen from a, rec a radio station. <laughs> <laughs> so it was kind of like, you know, it was karma. <laughs> and I actually saw my copy in a record store. Oh my God, that's wow. a great story. I, I got to say, when we wrote this scene, I thought, I, I thought one thing about the scene, uh, but I had I hadn't visualized how deeply emotional, uh, how far it would go. Uh, the words the words are all pretty much the same as as what was in the script, but uh, Chuck gets so much more um, agitated yes. than I pictured. Yes. And and then Jimmy's re reaction to that is is uh, I feel the same way. Is, I know is, what you mean. Is, I was surprised by the inner life that you portrayed here, Michael, in this first scene when he gets pushed into a corner a little bit and you just, he just cracks. I love the way you guys, I saw yeah. that coming and and I thought, hey, let's take it a little bit further. And because uh, I, I could see it kind of boiling up and it was just uh, uh, in in, uh, in Michael and, and somehow just, and you guys, you guys are so. Right there, yeah. Are That's so it. good here. I mean, he's so, in, <laughs> and he just from where he comes from, like yeah, ten seconds before. Guys are so good. Like cracks. And right. then Jimmy, Jimmy cares. Yeah, Jimmy's body language. Yep. Shifting, That's, shifting, that's shifting. beautiful. I was so nervous. This is the first time uh, I had ever directed uh, Michael. I had worked with Michael on uh, X Files. But first time I you had heard terrible things about me on the set. I'm sure. <laughs> I had heard nothing but good things, but I was I was so uh, you were there intimidated. though. I remember you out in the desert. Yeah, remember but it's watching? different to different to direct though. And I, yeah. I uh, and I I was so intimidated this day. Uh, but you you two gentlemen were so uh, nice and and professional and well, good. it's a and really good a scene. Great. And you know, we should, if it was a lousy scene, you would have <laughs> been getting a different vibe. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's a really beautifully written scene. So it is. Win win. Which, should, this was your first time working digital. Yes. Uh, with uh, author Albert uh, Yeah, DP. you're exactly right. We shot uh, uh, Breaking Bad on film, 35 millimeter motion picture film, and this is a shot on the red, the red dragon. And it's a it's a great camera. I do miss film though. Mm -hmm. There's no no denying that. It gives it, it gives and it takes away. Um, the, you, the, the advantages are easier to see. Uh, the, the 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 advantages of film are a little bit intangible. There there's a there's a little bit of there's a little bit of uh, grace to the way it handles uh, the human face and the mm -hmm. eyes yeah. that I that Forgiveness. I miss that I miss. Forgiveness, yeah. But uh, the digital also has some advantages that we can just we can roll and we can we can roll and also the, it's it's so uh, sensitive. Uh, to light, and also there's a lot of flexibility in post that we didn't have with film, and it's. Um, I, 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 I'm with you, Vince. I'm I remember little, being I'm on this I'm set. I'm sad. I'm sad that we're not on film. I remember. I remember being on this set and thinking, "Well, they can't possibly see this, <laughs> you know, because it was really dark. So dark. It yeah. felt yeah. dark on yeah. that stage, and it was not just the corners, but even where we were and where mm -hmm. we were yeah. lit. It seemed very dark, but it's so beautiful. I mean, it had. It's like warm flesh rather than yes. yeah. dank cold. It's a different thing. Yes. Yeah, you're right. And uh, Arthur really knows how to use this technology. You think he's got chops, this guy? I think he's so. got He's got Holy a future, hell. I think. And this was the first day, as this I recall. Was, yeah, and it one. was I think this hot. was the very first shot, I this think. This might be. Yeah. yeah. It was hot. Very first shot yeah. of the I think whole it is the first series. shot, yeah. 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 And that's a good one. 
So when you and I talk about how we co-wrote this, uh, do you want to say how we did that? I mean, well, it's like any other any other uh, episode th that we do. We talk about it in the writers' room with the rest of the staff, and we go through in tremendous detail, as much detail as we know how. Uh, we go through the whole script, and in this one, we sp we split it up. Yeah, uh, we split it up. So you wrote the first two acts and the teaser, and I wrote the the second the second part. Yeah. Uh, but having said that, uh, I, you know, I I feel like because because of the work in the writers' room, your fingerprints are all over the second half, and, and my fingerprints are, are on the first, first half. half. That's true. So it's 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 interesting. Yeah, that's that's and of course. Uh, the work you did directing was uh, surprising and great. It was so goddamn hot this yeah. day. But this, this was, was like my brain was about to leak out of my I, ear. I wanted to jump out of my skin during this scene because it was so much fun to write this this monologue. Uh, I, I love the visual side of, of filmmaking, but I love the words too. And I, I, I felt like we learned so much about the character, but then when you did this, Bob, just the sheer storytelling <laughs> was, well, yeah, yeah. was so know, much fun. Think about how much fun he's having turning himself into a legendary. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Paul Bunyan. Let me tell you right. where I used to be Paul Bunyan. <laughs> I love, I love, and by the way, and again, I said how hot it was. I was, I was in a little tent with like people fanning me practically. <laughs> this, these, these three poor bastards are out here. Bob is having to, is to look suit. like it's not hot. You're wearing this suit, you got the sun, like like you're uh, under a giant uh, ant under a magnifying glass out here. I don't know how you did it, you're not even sweating. Yeah, I love that. Well, so it didn't, the script said I wasn't sweating. <laughs> <laughs> This is a real skateboard. Can you blush part. on command? <laughs> <laughs> Catherine O'Hara can do that. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. She's wonderful. I get to work with her on Home Fries, a movie called Home oh, Fries. Oh, sure, yeah. She is wonderful. Yeah. She's so good. It was slip and fall. You, uh, so you're so good. This is a real skate park. You can <laughs> skate at if you're predisposed to do such a thing. Uh, I think there's three or four of them in Albuquerque, but this was the best one for our purposes. I love that um, Christian found all these places that we've yes. never seen before. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, for this to be the first stuff we saw, for this speech of Bob's to be yes. the first thing he had to do of the whole series, that was amazing. Christian, our wonderful locations in. manager, and his great. scouts, his crew. What a what a great team they are. Great, and great team. It makes such a difference to be on a location where the location crew has has made friends with everyone. Yes. And every, I mean, he's such. He and his guys are uh, his, his team. I shouldn't say guys because they're not all men. They they're they're such decent, straightforward people that uh, no matter where they go in Albuquerque, people want them around and people people don't object to uh, to having a shoot, which is wonderful. We pay them. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. no, it's not. No, but no, they no. are. So, no, they are no, very, very, plenty, very nice. There are plenty of crews on movies and TV that burn, shows. That, burn that, them out. I will not yeah. name them, but they, they there's too many we could name. But they mm -hmm. burn locations. They burn yeah. locations. Not just for themselves, but for everyone after them. There, but, there are neighborhoods in Albuquerque we can't shoot in because someone did something yeah. 15 years ago. Yeah. Hey, listen, they stopped hey. shooting things at Harvard after somebody went through there. Somebody made a film there. Oh, yeah. And it was the reason that uh, uh, um, Heaven's Gate, that the Harvard sequence there was shot in Oxford, England, uh, was because, well, you ain't gonna shoot in Harvard again, are you wow. kidding? I forget who it was, what, what show it was. But wow. Time. Yeah, they just laughed things up. There are a this, lot of boats in Albuquerque. Huh? There are. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got Elephant Butte Lake. Uh, yeah, they got Lake. Uh, two hours to the south, you could take a boat too. I, I, I love when Jimmy's plotting. That was it was it was it was so much fun to to kind of get get this plot going, and I think for the audience to to see a little Saul and there was a lot yes. of talk about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. And, and it comes into the wrists and, and the hands. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. This is a very nice piece of music uh, Dave Porter wrote. How does it? How do you guys figure out when we to did write a handoff? Music? Yeah, yeah, it was tricky. I mean, in our spotting sessions, obviously we always discuss it. But one of the fun things for this show was that we were really handing off between source and score, and trying to influence each other because we were really struggling to figure out what the tone of the show was. That was it was very hard, especially in those console. early days. Yeah. yeah, and we just kept on trying different ideas, and finally we just kind of stumbled into the right ones, and it felt like a, a really nice handoff. I don't think you really know the difference between source and score in a lot of these episodes. That's a very good point. So this is Dave Porter wrote this specifically for 
uh, this scene, but coming up here, when these guys pull off the scam, that's a piece of music you found. Yep, it's from a Dutch artist named Shook, who uh, did his first EP, I think it's his first track he ever wrote. And I just happened to find it online, and we were able to clear it, and it has this weird Prince funk vibe to it, which is mm. kind of interesting. It's very kind of 70s. Yes. Very funk. weird in 70s. And, and then, it, yeah. then it hands off to Dave at the very end, the where, end. Yeah. where he gets a little Lilo schaefer in yep. Yeah. It, it, is, it is funny. I think that as much trouble as we had writing and figuring out the tone and the writing, it wasn't, actually, I wouldn't say we had trouble figuring out the tone and the writing. It just, it sort of emerged organically. But figuring out how the show sounds, how the, how the scenes go over, that was, I think, one of the very, hardest, very hardest transitions, especially because we all, we had a, a vocabulary that had been developed on Breaking Bad, and this show really called for something else. Yeah. I remember the first mixtapes that we made, none of the music is appropriate for the show. We were way off base on all the original ideas we had. Oh, I bet you weren't that. We I, had, love, I love uh, Jimmy rehearsing. I, know, I, I love know, Jimmy. Sir. Making the reality he's uh-huh. about to step into. Yep. <laughs> <I love it. laughs> Somehow it doesn't work. I do too. That's, that's I love beautiful. the way you play this box. Yes. Yeah. I love, I love it. And then when you go, oh shit. Uh, I don't think that was, I can't remember if that was in the script. I think it was not. And I think, as I recall, as I remember you calling me because uh, in the original script, his car started and there was a lot more driving. Yes. And you just, on the day, you said, wait a minute, let's, let's simplify this a little bit. And it'll be just as, just as good. And you were absolutely right. I think that uh, necessity is the mother of invention. We were going to do some of this dialogue, not here, but coming up later as a toe shot. And we were just, I was behind schedule because I'm slower than glaciers as far as directing. So we just, necessity being the mother of invention, we had to, we had to make a change up. So here we have this young Dutch artist named Shook taking over. This is a great piece of music. Yes. It is very 70s kind of funky yeah. uh, kind of... We were, we, I think we were in our Rockford Files kind of mode on this one mm-hmm. a little yeah. bit. It's and great. we're also figuring out... to call those farting synths. Yes, <laughs> farting synths. <laughs> <laughs> so when uh, Daniel here starts skating, and also earlier in the skate park when he was skating, we're doing we're employing Texas swaps here, where this is the real... Coming up here is the real uh-huh. Daniel, yeah, yeah. and then we... The state cam operator lets him back out of frame, and then his stunt double comes skating in. So, and we did that at the uh, s- uh, skate park earlier too. It's the oldest trick in the book, and it's. Uh, yeah, there you, it you is. Love the, there he you, is. You now it's the old a stunt. Tr- guy. Yeah, that's a st- and this stunt, <clears throat> this young guy. Boy, I mean, he did it on this, money. Oh, God man. bless this guy. He was such a tough young guy, and he was ready to go, ready to. We only did one take, and he did it perfectly. Perfect. And then he said, I'm ready to do it again, boss. And I was like, no way. I don't want to hurt you. I don't want you getting hurt for a TV show. But he. He was so good because he didn't fall where you original where we originally planned. But it, it worked out. It did. Yeah, it worked out so it worked good. Worked out great. The lady, uh, the waitress in 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 the black T-shirt who put her hands to her her mouth there in the background mm-hmm. just went by. That's the lady who owns that uh, that actual uh, cafe. It's a great place to to go eat. Food is excellent there. They were really is it nice. Mexican food. No, it's uh, just, uh, I don't know what good you call it, good old American uh, breakfast type place. It's really good, breakfast and lunch. I would recommend going there, getting a bite. Don't forget to tip. Don't forget to tip, tip, tip. tip that tip, waitress. Tip well. <laughs> yeah. She took off on us. She what? <laughs> it's all going sideways. She, she, she hit and run. That's what I'm saying. She bailed and wailed. <laughs> oh, okay. And we're wondering we are, at this point, you. where are these guys? This was such a Megillah to it get. Was. These are the two stunt guys, yeah. uh, and they are they are they are hardwired to the uh-huh. uh, to the. Uh, and talk about you had to race a bunch of wires. Yeah, it you? wasn't. It actually wasn't that bad. We only had to do a couple of shots because the way that you placed the camera, there wasn't much we had to do. So it was good. And our twins are on a platform that we built off the. That's right. They're standing on a platform attached to the uh, trailer hitch, so which supported their weight, and uh, so they're not actually skating here. But the stunt guys were—they were on. They were really. Yes, they were really skating. Yeah. And if they were hardwired, that's kind of crazy dangerous. Well, no, no. The the wire is. uh, There was a reason for it. It was, and believe believe me, everything because Al Goto and and. uh, But was it the wire from their their? Um, and it wrist? was wired to no wired to the, oh. to a safety harness they were wearing, uh, I believe, around their waists or chests. Okay. And, and it was it was uh, 
and and everything was done. I can't remember all the exact details, but uh, but Al and his guys do everything absolutely. Yeah, if they no, 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 they no. tripped, they weren't going to be dragged across the street. No, 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 no they, they would like they would have been suspended. They would have no. been suspended. That's oh, what that's it was. There's, there's nothing more important to us than safety. Yeah. Oh no, because uh, it's it's it, it, this is. It's easy to lose sight of it, but it's all entertainment. Not worth and, anyone getting hurt. And, for a and TV it's show. one thing that this I worry so about. I worry about with students watching this stuff, and they think that they can just go out and do it yeah. and not worry about safety. So please, please be safe. Safe if you're first. Making Don't try this at home. There's it's, always a way to do it safely. Yeah. E even that shot was the stunt people, mm -hmm. and then our real people come into frame. Ah, <laughs> Miriam, <laughs> Miriam, <laughs> Miriam is so great. This is uh, this is Miriam Colon. Cologne. I'm sorry if I, I, I can't pronounce it. I am very monolingual. But this, this lovely lady uh, played Al Pacino's mom in the movie Scarface. Another oh, Scarface hi. crossover. And her English is, is perfect, but uh, yeah, obviously yeah. Her, her Spanish is perfect as well. And uh, she these these three together are so much fun. Great. <laughs> Come on in. It's a study in contrast. <laughs> Come on in. They're we'll only end like your life six for feet you. taller than she is. <laughs> These are like, practically bumping their head on the roof here. These guys, they're so tall. I love it. This is a fun. This is a, the folks who own this house are very nice. It's a great house. And of course, you'll see it in the next episode right. too. And then we switch back to score. Yeah, this is Dave. You, you know, Thomas, you're right. You really be hard pressed to tell the score from Where the they, source. They, yeah. And I think we kind of stumbled into the answers, you know, which was an interesting process. Yeah. Was breaking Bad was so strange. Now he's rehearsing again. Yeah. Yeah. Any changes? Let's rehearse yes. this part. You know, he has rehearsed his new reality. By the way, Bob, I got to say, it's not, I, I got to think it's not that easy for, oh, and look how great Bob nails this thing. Yeah. Right in the frame, right to the edge of the frame. Ah. It's just, uh, it's Doris amazing. Day parking. I love uh, <laughs> driving that car. You know that. You're I love, good at that. Please write lots of scenes, Ray. Do U-turns and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's one of the joys because I was telling my kids I shouldn't be. My wife is always saying, don't tell them about times when you cut corners or life is fun because it's a... It's better like just I'm be able to show them on TV. I'm telling them driving on TV is so fun because they've locked off the street with cops. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, all yeah. the cars are, you know, our cars and you can just uh, feel... Uh, Free to just hit the gas hard. Oh, oh, oh shit! Oh. That one shot I, looking up, that was done by Michelle oh. McLaren. Look who that is. Oh, yep. oh no. Now Raymond we gotta Cruz. watch the second episode. <laughs> That's right. I Bing, stole boom. that one shot from Michelle. That she shot that for episode two, and I took a little privilege and stole it for episode one. We Which really, one? The, we really wanted people to the watch the next episode. Straight yeah, up. Yeah. 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 We really wanted them to watch the next uh, one. Uh, everybody did such a great job in this. Hopefully so fun. we yeah, I know yeah, what did you think about putting him in this episode? Obviously. It was hard keeping a, a secret. Yeah. He was called Miho throughout, and mm -hmm. everyone, no one could say his real name, not even in the writing stage. We didn't want anyone, we didn't want the secret getting out. Luckily, it didn't, as far it, as we know. Yeah, Raymond was good about keeping a secret, too. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.